The third facet of chiropractic is the chiropractic science. What are the physio physiological effects of joint adjustments? What actually happens when this high velocity, low amplitude impulse is delivered? We can categorize this into two parts, mechanical and neurological. It's a mechanical therapy, so we expect mechanical effects. To be more specific, we can talk about the simple restoration of joint motion. So uh, someone who has a lack of range of motion, diminished range of motion, muscle stiffness, etc. Chiropractic has been shown to be able to restore proper motion, both in the acute phases, also in the chronic phases. So repetitive stress injuries, uh, osteoarthritic changes, anything that has joint adhesions, fibrosis, whether along the spine or in the periphery. Uh, these high velocity, low amplitude thrusts can break up the adhesions to again restore proper motion. And finally, the relief of nerve compression. Nerve compression is a mechanical phenomenon, whether it occurs in the extremities, whether it occurs centrally along the spine. So we can expect that a mechanical treatment can help relieve uh, nerve compression whether it's an IVF encroachment, whether it's a carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, take an example of a disc herniation. Patient comes in with pain down their leg, your classic sciatica, MRIs are done, disc herniation is, is uh, confirmed. Why did the disc herniate? So there's a bit of detective work as far as finding out the cause. We can take it even a step further. Why did the disc herniate to the left? Why didn't it herniate to the right? These are mechanical questions that interest the chiropractor in order to try to fix the problem. If we now look at the neurological effects, I'm gonna tease you a little bit and ask you what this is. Memory banks are firing. Anybody tell me what this is? Very good, it's the gate control theory. Uh, introduced in 1965 by Patrick Wall and uh, McGill's own Ronald Melzack. And the gate control theory actually serves a really good uh, explanation for what happens neurologically during a chiropractic adjustment. So if we look at what the, chiro what the gate control theory actually tells us, it simply tells us that, first of all, there's two major inputs into the nervous system. That's it. We have small diameter afferents, or C fibers here, and we have large diameter afferents, shown here as A alpha and A beta fibers. Small diameter afferents carry no susception. Large diameter afferents are coming from the skin, from the muscles, GTOs, muscle spindles, and from the joint mechanoreceptors themselves. And what Melzack and Wall showed us is that there is a relationship between the small diameter and large diameter afferents. And the relationship is such that because of the speed in which the large diameter afferents reach the cord, they have an inhibitory effect on the nociceptive firing also entering the cord. So the ultimate balance between these small and large diameter afferents are the ultimate result of what happens centrally, both segmentally at the cord and higher up in the higher, uh, higher parts of the, the, the nervous system. What we know is that chiropractic adjustments have a very profound, a very strong stimulation of large diameter afferents because in and of itself, the adjustment will stimulate skin receptors, GTOs, muscle spindles, and joint mechanoreceptors. So what does this mean in perhaps more clinical terms? Here we have mechanoreceptive affrontation from the adjustment entering into the dorsal horn, causing this disynaptic inhibition like we saw in the gate control theory, inhibiting nociception from the area. The inhibition of nociception results in an in inhibition of pain or a relief of pain higher up. Secondly, we know that when a patient has pain, they typically have Muscle spasm, it's a reflexive occurrence that, that the body does to protect the area. So the same 
afferent barrage from the C fibers has a, a monosynaptic uh, effect on the alpha motor neuron, causing a muscle spasm. So in the same way that an, an adjustment can inhibit nociception and pain, it also inhibits the production of muscle spasm. And again, in the same way, it'll have an effect on the gamma motor neuron in the, uh, in the anterior horn to restore normal muscle tone or reset the gain in the muscle that's dysfunctional. So in effect, the neurological effects of the adjustment restore proper neurology to the area in question. A better understanding of the mechanical and the neurological effects can, can lead us into a list of conditions that a chiropractor typically treats or indications for referral. Neck pain, muscle tension, back pain, headache, IVF encroachment, disc, peripheral nerve syndromes, osteoarthritis, whiplash, postural problems, repetitive stress injuries, and articular pain in extremities. It's also important to note that chiropractors do work with the CSST. They do work with the SAC, so workers' compensation or uh, car accidents. Victims can also be seen by chiropractors and get uh, coverage for those uh, problems.